Step 3. No cloning theorem and faster than light communication. So let's go back to the teleportation protocol and ask a few questions. Alice s communicated her state to Bob. Did she clone it while teleporting it? After all, she started with a state psi and she did not send the physical qubit to Bob. Yet at the end of the protocol, we saw that Bob does have the qubit psi. So what was going on there? Well, initially, Bob's qubit was part of a maximally entangled state. He had one part of the entangled state and Alice had the other. At the end of the protocol, Alice, Alice's qubit A1, it was part of a maximally entangled state. She performed her measurement, measurement in the Bell basis and that projected her two qubits onto one of the four possible Bell states where all of them are maximally entangled. So what that means is that initially the state of the qubit A1 was psi and the state of the qubit that Bob had in his possession was a maximally mixed state. And then after the protocol the state of Alice's qubit A1 became the maximally uh, mixed state, whereas Bob's qubit became the state psi. So we see that there was no cloning or copying of, in, of, of the state, even though there was no direct physical transmission of the state psi from Alice to Bob. But this is an interesting question. Is cloning possible? And let's, let's, let's have a look at it. So let's only consider cloning of pure states. And let's say that we've got some device. This is our cloning, hypothetical cloning device. And how it works is that it's some, some unitary, and the input states is some arbitrary state psi with some uh, um, other state which is initialized in state zero. So it's a two qubit input state, and we've got a two qubit output state where both of the qubits are now in the state psi. Now the question that we are trying to answer, is such a transformation possible? What does the unitary look like that can achieve such a transformation? For example, if we start in a state 0, 0, after applying our cloning unitary, we would like to obtain state 0, 0. That makes sense. If we start in the state plus 0 and apply our cloning unitary, we would like to obtain as output states plus for the first qubit and plus for the second qubit. And so on and so forth until it works for a general input state. So, before we present a, a, a proof of what's going on, let's consider some examples to get some intuition. And let's consider a C0 gate as our uh, unitary U. So, a C0 gate is represented here in the Dirac notation or here in the matrix notation. What this really means is that if the state of the first qubit is zero, then apply the identity to the second qubit, meaning don't do anything. If the state of the first qubit is one, then apply Pauli x to the second qubit. And let's consider some inputs. So first, let's try a very simple input zero, zero. If we apply C0, you can check for yourself, the output is also 0, 0. So, in this case, we can say that we have cloned the qubit even though we haven't really done anything. Second case is more interesting. We start uh, in the state 1, 0. So now we are trying to clone the state 1. And, as we said, if the state of the first qubit is 1, we apply the Pauli x to the second qubit. And in fact, our input state is in 1, and our second state is in 0, but after application of the Pauli x, it flips into 1. So we went from input 1, 0 to output 1, 1. So again, we have cloned our state. How about if we consider a superposition of 0 and 1 as our input? So our total input is psi 0. In this case, if you apply the unitary C0, you will see that you obtain an entangled state 0, 0, plus 1, 1, which is not the product state that we were aiming for. We were aiming for plus, plus. So in this case, cloning has failed. 
at least with uh, this example of C0 and this particular input. So, let's look at the cases when it worked and then when it didn't. It worked when we are trying to clone the state 0 and the state 1. But it failed when we are trying to clone some superposition of these two states. So it appears that we can only clone states which are orthogonal. Well, let's try and uh, prove it. Let's say that we are trying to clone an arbitrary state psi. So our expected or our desired output is psi psi. And let's say that it works for any two input states. So it doesn't matter if our input is psi or some other general state phi. We, we require from our cloning device that it works in any scenario. So in the first case, when our input set is psi, our output is psi psi. Whereas in the second case, when our input is phi, our output is phi phi. Now what we can do is we can take these two expressions and we can take the inner product of the left-hand sides and the right-hand sides of these two expressions. So on the right-hand side, it's quite simple. We take the inner product of phi of the first qubit with psi of the uh, first qubit, and we uh, multiply it by the inner product of this second phi and this second psi. So we get the inner product of uh, phi psi squared. Whereas here, on this side, we've got these unitaries. What actually happens when we take the uh, inner product the second unitary uh, turns into a U dagger. And we know that one of the defining, the defining property of a unitary is that U dagger times U is equal to identity. So these unitaries cancel. And what we get is the inner product of phi and psi, multiplied by the inner product of 0 and 0. But we know what the inner product of 0 and 0 is. It's just 1. So on the left-hand side, we end up with just the inner product of phi and psi, and that has to be equal to the same inner product squared. So we can now easily solve for what the inner product between these two arbitrary states should be. Well, in order to satisfy this equation, it has to be 0 or it has to be 1. So what does this actually mean? When the inner product of two states is 1, it means that the two states are actually only one state. They must be the same, because we assume that they are normalized, as all states should be. On the other hand, when it's zero, it means that the two states are orthogonal. So our cloning really uh, works, as we saw in the example before, for states that can be distinguished with certainty. Remember, orthogonal states are always distinguishable deterministically. So, we can say that no cloning for arbitrary states. We cannot clone an arbitrary state in quantum mechanics, which is in stark contrast to classical physics. Now, let's ask a second interesting question. Is teleportation instantaneous? Can we communicate faster than the speed of light? And in order to answer that question, we have to consider the timeline of, of events that are going on during our teleportation protocol. So this is our timeline, and we start at time t0 when we initialize our system. So this is when we create our initial state. At some later time t1, Alice performs her uh, measurement in the Bell basis on the two qubits that she has. Then at some later uh, time t2, Alice sends this, the outcome of the measurements to Bob, and he receives these outcomes at time t3. So. Let's go step by step and consider what is going on with Bob's state. So at time t0, we said that Bob's qubit is part of a maximally entangled pair, which means that his, the reduced density of his qubit is a maximally mixed state, meaning if he measures it in Pauli z basis, he will get uh, the outcome 0 with probability half or the outcome 1 with probability half. In fact, if he measures in any basis, he will get the pro, uh, outcome plus one or minus one with the same probability. So it's maximally unsure about his own state. That also means that he has no idea about Alice's state.
Okay. Then, at time t1, Alice performs her measurement. So just before the measurement, the total state of all three qubits is given by this expression, which we derived in the previous step. So we can rewrite the initial state in terms of uh, the Bell basis for Alice's qubits, which leaves Bob's qubit in these following states, depending on which state Alice has. So at this time, does Bob know anything about Alice's state A1? He doesn't, because still nothing really happened. We have only rewritten the initial state. So a Bob's state is still maximally mixed. We, then we ask the question, what happens just after T1, just after Alice measures in the Bell basis? So just after the measurement, he knows that with probability one quarter, Alice measured the outcome phi plus. And with the same probability, she could have obtained uh, the other three remaining Bell states. So he knows that with probability one quarter, he has the state psi. Or with probability one quarter, where he has some equivalent state given by these following expressions. And this is... Um, distribution, which we can write in the density matrix formalism. So let's do that. Bob's qubit can be written as follows. With probability a quarter, he has the state alpha 0 plus beta 1, which in uh, density matrix formalism is given by the outer product. With probability one quarter, he has the following state, and so on and so forth for the other two possibilities. We can go through the algebra and we will see that the cross terms cancel and in fact what we obtain is that the state of Bob given by rho b is this expression right here which can simplify to again a maximally mixed state. This is because we started with uh, state psi which is normalized meaning mod alpha squared plus mod beta squared has to be equal to one. So even just after the measurement Bob still doesn't know anything about the state psi. His qubit is maximally mixed. Let's see what happens when we go to time t2. At this time, we said that Alice sends the outcome to Bob. Well, nothing really changes from uh, just after the measurement occurred at time t1, because Bob has not received the message about the outcomes of the measurements. So his state is still maximally mixed state. He has no information about the uh, state to be teleported, state psi. So still, no teleportation. Even though the measurement by Al Alice has been performed at time t1. Finally, at time t3, Bob receives Alice's message. He receives the two qubits telling him about which outcome she measured. And then Bob finally has the following state. He has the state psi up to some unitary uh, Pauli x, y, or the product of x and y. So it's only at this time, at time t3, when he receives the message, that teleportation really truly has taken place. Bob must receive the classical message in order for teleportation to work. So he has to uh, wait all this time from t2 to t3 to receive this message. And this message can travel maximally at the speed of light. So we don't communicate faster than the speed of light and we do not violate special relativity.